Welcome, welcome, welcome to New Stripe City, a YouTube channel for diehard Bengals fans. I'm your host, Ace Boogie. A big shout out to my subscribers. And if you guys love the Bengals, be sure to bang that subscribe button. And if you're a diehard, be sure to click the notification button. And if you think Lamar Jackson's arm is more accurate than the major media's takes on the Bengals, then like this video. I'm also doing a 3,000 subscribers Madden giveaway. All you have to do is subscribe, comment, and share this post to be entered. Be sure to tag our Twitter or Instagram at New Stripe City when you share this post. And as you guys know, I've launched the NSC merch with the all day, every day t-shirts. They're $29.99 and the link is in the description. Okay, now that the plug is over, let's get into it. So the reason uh, that we were called here today was to discuss why the Bengals released Chris Baker. Uh, the Bengals actually signed Baker back on March 7th to a one-year, $3 million deal with uh, somewhere between $300,000 and $500,000 guaranteed. And they did this move in an effort to help stop the run. So getting into the first reason, most people believe that the first reason that Baker was cut was due to simply per production. I mean... The 6'2", 320-pounder only played a total of 37 snaps through two preseason games. And in those 37 snaps, the dude didn't even record a single tackle. And the writing was kind of on the wall after he only received nine total snaps in game two. And we also saw an emergence of Andrew Billings and Ryan Glasgow, which that ties in later. But Baker simply didn't produce while he was on the team. And it wasn't at a level where it caused any kind of controversy or competition on the roster. So the second reason that I believe that they cut him was just due to the emergence of the youth. So both Marvin Lewis and Terrell Austin last week after the last game against the Cowboys, they both raved about Andrew Billings, who played that primarily nose tackle spot, the same spot that Baker played. And Ryan Glasgow also played that and has played extremely solid in the rotation. And the Bengals are also getting back, and they also got back this week, Andrew Brown, who was a fifth-round pick, as well as Josh Topo, who returned to practice this week. And many, um, including NFL.com, believe that Andrew Brown has the potential to be an NFL starter. But Brown, however, will most likely receive uh, snaps as a three technique because he's only 296 pounds, while Topo is actually the size of a nose tackle who was at one time 350 pounds, but he was also hurt and he just came back to practice. But Lewis, uh, Marvin Lewis that is, believes that Ryan Glasgow can not only play the nose, but also the three technique, which is why they felt so comfortable with going ahead and making that move. The third reason, it always comes down to the cash. It comes down to the money. The Bengals actually saved $1.98 in cutting Baker, which brings their total salary cap to $22.3 million. So they essentially, according to Jeff Hobson, paid Baker about $500,000. Again, this is money that could be used on extensions for Carlos Dunlap. Geno Atkins and possibly even Darquez Denard. So definitely comes down to money. I mean, there wasn't really a need to keep him there. We were overstashed at the position. So, you know, essentially it just wasn't a good move to keep him financially. And the Bengals have continued their new trend of surprisingly releasing veterans. They released George Iloka to start the week and they ended by cutting Baker. And the next possible candidates that could get cut are Ryan Hewitt and Michael Johnson is what I'm thinking. I just want to thank you guys again for helping this channel grow into one of the biggest Bengals channels on YouTube and I'm truly nothing without Hootay Nation and also I would like to once again thank those who have purchased the All Day Everyday shirts. I'll be sending them out tomorrow so be sure to check your mail for that fire. I see that you guys also enjoyed my Marvin Lewis breakdown, so be on the lookout for similar videos to those. And also for my OG subscribers, I talked to my co-host G, and we are going to try to connect pretty soon once we get some things figured out. 
But now it's the time that you guys have been waiting for, and it's time to shout out some new subscribers. So first, I want to shout out to Lucy the Chief, or Lucy the Chef. I'm sorry, my bad, and Mark from Covington, Kentucky. But as usual, I leave you guys with a who day, all day, every day, and especially on Sunday.